it's everyday things where you, you have to think twice about, you know, your route, uh, who have you told, uh, those kind of things. She, she's absolutely right. And today uh, in International Women's Day debate, uh, Day debate in the chamber, it was really good that many of these challenges were, were taken on and front and centre. I would like to say to Sarah's family and anybody who's lost uh, someone tragically at the moment, it's a disappearance, it's unexplained, they're waiting for news. This must be absolutely horrendous and we know that this has happened to too many families. But I think Becky's right, we, you know, we're fed up with it. But realistically, what can government do? Well, we've got more police officers coming on the street and Cressida Dick was right to say this is very rare in terms of something happening and absolutely reassuring that this is taken seriously. As the statement today, of course, from uh, the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, our safeguarding minister, to, to Bonnie's point, is Victoria Atkins. She's absolutely determined to protect women. And there's a bill going through the House at the moment, which is focused on domestic violence and making sure that women are safe in their homes as well. My local council's got more money and I'm really pleased about this. This is an opportunity for a refuge uh, and moving uh, women safely forward. But absolutely, uh, there's also many men as well who worry about their, their wives and daughters and girlfriends and they want them to be safe in the streets as well. This is a problem for the whole of society. Okay, let's talk to some of our audience who got their hands up. Joe. Hi, I, I think... But he's not, he's trying to win the votes. And I, I think you need to tell him to stop. And I, and I recognise that, but Fiona's just asked, what can the government do? What can leaders do? That's and, what I want to speak to. OK, well, I want to bring... Well, we I need ask to be you, reflective I on that, but I do completely agree with Dan's point. This is very raw for a very... Um, okay. Very one particular family. Of this course. is very raw, and they don't really know what's happened to somebody who disappeared. And I'm very I don't mindful think of that. There's no I think question about really that. Are. But the role here, particularly when we have government and opposition, is to try and see what can actually be sorry. done about it. We've got Victor sorry, desperate to get I'm back sorry. in, and Mims, we haven't heard from you yet. Well, thank you, Fiona, and, and it's a really fascinating conversation about, you know, a family that's in pain, and that's what I, I agree with Steve on that. I saw a lot of pain coming through through the TV of, of lack of communication, and, and, you know, it's difficult with a, a young baby and a new one on the way for any family when you're far from home, and I, I kind of get that as well. So when uh, you've got the Environment, environment Minister, Zach Goldsmith, saying how he's blowing up his family... What Megan wants, Megan gets. Do you agree with that? So, to my mind... Do you um, like to express that view? The Prime Minister spoke on Monday about Her Majesty being a unifying force, and absolutely she is. And in the statement she's made, it shows that she's determined to use that for, for her family. And I think that's really, really important. And we've had a lot of division over the last few years, some of it playing out uh, 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 in, in the conversations this evening. So this is an opportunity to, to unify. I think we need to separate the wider racism conversation, call it out, absolutely, as I did as sports minister with behaviour on terraces, in football, in a way that people continue to turn a blind eye and, and absolutely think that intolerance is OK. We cannot allow that. But absolutely, we need this family to have that space and privacy uh, to come to But you haven't together. answered the question, ma'am. There's only one. There's a question. Well, no, the question is, Bonnie, hang to your ears. So the Prime Minister appears to be softening us up for, for seeing what the independent peer review body says in, in late spring, and then possibly it might be more than 1%. So absolutely, as Employment Minister and, and at DWP, where we've, you know, had more people coming uh, to, to be part of DWP from sectors that we'd uh, never have imagined being applying for universal credit. And what one uh, figure that sticks in my mind uh, of, of our staff, um, 27,000 extra hours worked over the Easter Bank holiday weekend to get people paid and supported because the, the handbrake on the economy of the pandemic coming down on them, a massive shock to the system. But of course, it's our NHS, our teachers who've continued to be on the front line, including OK, but do you, do you think do you think it's about NHS staff? Do they deserve more than one percent pay rise? Well, in an ideal world, we'd like to be remunerating everybody who's been on the front line of the pandemic more. But as we've just heard described, this is difficult. We've spent over, um, you know, 400 billion supporting people. And I know